ocean anymore. I think content is abundant. Content is everywhere. Um, so there's a lot of noise. So we have to always think about, you know, what can we do to cut through that noise? What can we do to be uh, unique? And what can we do to really reach our customers on a deeper level? Like timeless, right? So we were talking mm -hmm. about Disney before. And if we think about Disney as a content creator, what's something about Disney that is that is so timeless? And Disney has what's called a five minute rule. That's mm -hmm. what's missing in a lot of people's storytelling is, yeah, sure, okay, we see who you are, you're the CEO of your business, you're talking, yada, yada, yada. Why does this matter to you? Welcome back to the Omni Channel podcast. Today, I have the awesome AC with me. Hi, AC, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you for having me. AC, we're going to talk about storytelling in your marketing today, specifically Disney storytelling. But before we get into that, can you tell our listeners about, a bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. So my name is AC. I'm out of Canada. I'm in Ottawa, the capital city of Canada. Uh, and I'm a filmmaker. Um, I'm a filmmaker who has a, a big business background. So I grew up my entire life very uh, left brained, very functional, very practical, I went to school for finance, learned a lot of math. Uh, but I had a creative side in me that I was that was really suppressed for a very long time. And um, as I got into my career a little bit more as I was able to invest into camera equipment and uh, you know audio equipment and things to learn and things to really express the voice that I had kind of suppressed for a very long time I got into filmmaking and now I've married the two worlds of business finance marketing uh, and now filmmaking and creative uh, art to now start nine mile creative which is my business that works on impactful storytelling and filmmaking when it comes to marketing and uh, getting your business and your personal brand out there what do you think is the issue with the industry right now that we need to incorporate in our marketing? So I think there's a mindset shift that needs to be made right now. I think a lot of people just focus on video as something that they just need to produce over and over again. Uh, and they're just oversaturating the market, right? A lot of people say content is king. I don't really agree with that notion anymore. I think content is abundant. Content is everywhere. Um, so there's a lot of noise. So we have to always think about, you know, what can we do to cut through that noise? What can we do to be uh, unique? And what can we do to really reach our customers on a deeper level? Um, because I think customers and people are now craving deep connections and now are craving authenticity. Whereas a lot of the stuff you see online is now manufactured, it's oversaturated, and it's just too much. And you're not having that deep connection with your, your with your customer. Instead, you're actually just inundating them and just you know, piling on too much content, uh, which will lead them to probably just unfollow you and just to mute your accounts and stuff. And, and that's not what you want. Exactly. Um, why do you think that? Oh, how do we create that connection first? I want to know because you, you mm -hmm. did say that we have to create content that is unique, that is capturing mm -hmm. people and connecting with people. How can we get there? How can we connect with people in our content? Yeah, so you know, in some ways, um, we've moved so technological when it comes to marketing and digital marketing and content production, and content editing. I think we need to go back to the basics a little bit, right? And the basics of marketing is really just avataring, knowing your customer really, really deeply. Um, I think a lot of the times we're really getting away from that now because we're trying to appease the largest audience out there, right? We're trying to just create content that speaks to everybody. But traditionally, we know that when we speak to everyone, we're really speaking to nobody. So it's important to get really, really down deep psychologically to who your avatar is, um, you know, the things that they consume and, uh, you know, their fears, their desires, um, you know, their pain points and things that are going on in their life that are important to them. And, um, you know, we actually have an abundant amount of information available these days, right? You know, companies like Facebook are so good at like harvesting this information about you, about the different pages you like uh, and the different shows that you watch and things like that, right? And this is what feeds the algorithm into what your content, what they're showing you. So as marketers and as small businesses, it's important for us to understand that information too and really study our avatar and see the things that they're into, right? Think about the different industries and businesses that are related to what you're doing, right? Maybe there are some people who watch a certain TV show or a movie that would be really into what you're doing, right? And when you learn that about them, you learn about the language that they speak, uh, the different words and the vocabulary that they use. And these are the kind of things that you want to include into your own marketing, into your own videos as well well. So it's really just understanding and just having to want to have that deep connection yourself with the client. You know, sometimes people have problems with connecting deeply with people, um, maybe because of their own boundaries and their own space that they want to keep between people. But I think in order to create that deep connection, you have to open that channel within yourself to allow for that connection to happen. And for that, you need to be 
more vulnerable in your content or how would you be opening up to yeah. So, I mean, so there's one side, there's the market research, right? So you want to be able mm -hmm. to understand the client first before you do that authentic, uh, that, uh, that authentic, um, you know, content, um, you, you, I, I want, I want people to do what feels right for them, right? What feels creative to them. Um, if they feel like oversharing, uh, maybe something that may be helpful, then, you know, go for it. Uh, and, and it depends on the audience too. It depends on the, the nature of what you're doing. Um, even things like being transparent, like being transparent with your corporate practices, you know, how you treat your employees, uh, you know, how, what you're doing for the community, things like that to me is enough, right? You don't need to go too vulnerable when it comes to that kind of stuff, but just take a little bit, uh, uh, you know, just peel back the curtain a little bit when it comes to your company and some of the things that you're doing and some of the things that you actually want to show the world, right? Because I think it's so important to put that authentic, um, message out there that attracts that type of audience that comes back to you. When it comes to video only, let, let's look at video because that's where you are expert at. Mm -hmm. um, how do we get, you know, our, I mean, obviously you said, let's do our research, you know, and, and create a video. But what is really you think is capturing when we watch a video for a couple of seconds and decide like, oh, this is something I want to watch. How can mm -hmm. we incorporate that kind of engagement in the way we produce these contents? Yeah, I mean, the hook, the hook is always so important, right? I think the biggest mistake a lot of people who really don't have much experience in content marketing uh, is that they don't produce a hook that's engaging enough. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, back to my earlier point, some people think a hook is just like a zoom in or like a sound effect or something like that. That's not a hook. Uh, a hook is something that is uh, shows that you understand your audience. All right. So if there's a pain or a problem or like a situation that the client is going through, that your business or your product or your service solves, this is what you want to display very early in your video. Uh, and that puts them into that mindset, right? A lot of the times people are um, impulse buying, I guess, when they're scrolling, right? Uh, and so if you have a business that sells a product that you know scratches that itch, then you're gonna want to identify that pain and that problem very early on in that video, whether it's through text, uh, whether it's through, it's, it's just something that really will just gather attention. And um, I love doing this type of research because uh, sometimes when I, you know, I don't have much going on, like I will actually scroll on my phone a little bit. I don't scroll much. I don't go on social media much, but when I do, I try to just study, right? So if I'm working with a particular client or when I think about my own content, I'm going to search for that hashtag and I'm just going to keep scrolling until something stops me. Right. And when something stops me, I'm like, oh, that's really good. And I save it. Right. So now I have a bank of like a whole bunch of things within that industry that grab my attention. And now I can go back and I can study and then I can just bring these things back to the client, see what they have to say, too, because um, like I don't, I'm not a big fan of like reinventing the wheel. If something works, then you just add your own particular flavor and your own flair into it. Yeah, I love that. And what would you say to people, especially nowadays where the content gets shorter and shorter and the attention span is, you know, shorter, according to the research, right? Um, to those people who feel like they need to have this like a rise of energy whenever they sit down and shoot a video content, for example, when they are naturally more calm and collected, and that's not how they communicate, but they feel like they need to be someone they're not just yeah. to get people to keep watching or engaging with the content. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of people like not being who they are on camera. Uh, I understand some people need some coaching, some people may need a little bit of practice, maybe feeling comfortable in front of a camera, maybe, um, you know, public speaking. Uh, so I recommend those people to get that help or do some practice before they get into camera that just makes everything just go so much faster but there's different ways to be able to get someone's attention you don't need to be like in your face and be like ah you know really like really loud you can really just start with something very vulnerable like a deep point that would actually resonate with that audience right so for example like it's a pain point let's say you're selling um you know funeral services or like so, like you know some life insurance right uh you may want to lead with something that you know brings to the pain point of maybe having to take care of like an elderly parent or something like that, right? You might want to cut into some B-roll right away of someone caring for their elderly parent inside like a hospital bed or something like that. So if I'm scrolling through TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, and I have that same situation too, where my parents are in long-term care or whatever, something like that may actually stop me, right? Because this is something that I may have been putting off for a little while. Yeah, I love those points. Um, when it comes to creativity, because when we are in businesses and we want to keep, you know, creating content, there comes a time where we are like, okay, so what do I talk about? Like, I have no idea, right? Mm -hmm. And you already kind of maxed out on your ideas before. And I'm like, you are just in 
looking at the blank, you know, piece of paper mm-hmm. and you don't know. What is your tips on getting your creativity back when it comes to your content? Yeah, you know what? It's um, you know, when you have exhausted all of your options and all of your ideas, then we can leverage technology, right? There is so much great AI out there right now, ChatGPT. Once you know your avatar and you program your avatar into ChatGPT, sometimes ChatGPT can even help you find that avatar. Then from there, you can actually just ask it for ideas for content, right? You don't need to use every single one of them, but it's just a great way to just get a kickstart um, using technology to be able to get more ideas on kind of what to produce. Another way as well is to, once you have an avatar, right, you can actually reach out to people who are within that avatar or who kind of match very closely to that. And then you can ask them. Um, you can see what are they interested in seeing more of. Um, and if you can get some sort of insight at all as into the things that they're interested in watching on social media, on Netflix, on TV, whatever it is, then you can create content similar around that as well, right? Because it doesn't need to always be about your business, right? You can have fun sometimes. You can throw some memes up sometimes uh, that are related to what your client is into. And then this will provide them not just education that they need, Uh, or any persuasion that they need in order to buy your service. It actually gives them entertainment value too. And customers, they like when you give them value, period, right? When they're spending a dollar with your with your company, with your business, they want to get as much value as possible. And it and a lot of people just think about the product value, right? The service value. What's the value you're getting out of this transaction? But they don't think about the entertainment value, the value of doing business with me that makes you feel like a better person because, you know, this is a charitable organization or something like that, right? Though, So there's so many different ways to think about how you can provide value to your client using social media uh, in different ways that don't necessarily bring back like a direct dollar and cent when it comes to, you know, what you're putting out. So it's, it's an important way to think, uh, to shift your mindset as a business owner. Um, when it comes to the video content, how long do you think the ideal content should be? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the channel, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. If you are just trying to get the quick attention on social media, Instagram, TikTok, then you're probably going to want to keep it under 30 seconds. Um, And even sometimes 30 seconds is too long, right? When people scroll through content, you typically, and this number just goes down year after year, how much time do you actually have to grab their attention before they scroll past, right? Because they're scrolling past, that's their default, right? It's down to like about half a second now or a second now to actually try to grab their attention to be able to watch. Um, Because a lot of times when people see that it's an ad or when they see it's like a company putting something out, they're automatically going to scroll past anyways, right? So you're already fighting against like an uphill battle uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff. When you want to explain them a little bit more, right? So I consider that top of funnel. You have your top of funnel Mm -hmm. content with social media. Once you're ready to kind of gra- gather a little bit more information from them, let's say that they're, they're a bit interested more in what you have to offer from either your 30 second ad or your 30 second spot on social media. Now you're directing them somewhere else, whether it's a sign up page online or you know to your website and or to your YouTube for your longer form content. So let's say, for example, you and I, we place like a, a short clip of this podcast mm-hmm. uh, onto my social media where I'm talking about marketing right now. If someone wants to market their business, wants to learn more about what I do. I may direct them to my website. I may direct them to an email signup page. There, I can have a little bit longer of information, right? Maybe two minutes, maybe three minutes. I have a video explaining myself, uh, explaining my process, explaining what I'm doing. Um, And then from there, they're a bit more interested. They're a bit down more further on the customer buyer journey. I'll be able to have their attention a little bit longer. Uh, If there's someone who really is into my stuff and they really want to learn my marketing techniques and stuff like that, then maybe they want to check out one of my podcast episodes when it comes to me speaking about content marketing or something like that. And then on a drive to, you know, another city, they have an hour, they want to listen to my podcast, then then you can hang on, hang on with them a little bit longer. The problem is that people encounter people at the top of the funnel with content that's too long. Right. Mm-hmm. So let's say uh, I'm coming out to my friends on Facebook and I have this podcast and I'm just putting my podcast out there. Hey, guys, check out my 90 minute long podcast right now to people on my Facebook. I'm probably going to get like maybe one view, two views max. And like they're going to drop off after like 10 minutes maximum. Right. So we've got to be very considerate about um, when we're encountering them, where we're encountering them and kind of where we want to push them forward and who we're trying to target. So basically about, what you're uh, saying is that the. The more unaware people are of your existence, the less likely it is for them to consume the content from you. Like the longer content, it's exactly. the less likely to stick around. So what you're saying is that the with the level of awareness, we need to um, 
increase our content length, you know, because the more they are aware, the more invested they become, right? I love how you just took everything I said in like five minutes and condensed it down to one sentence. So, <laughs> so you're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, the, uh, the amount of love uh, of, you know, problem awareness, solution awareness, product awareness that they have, the less time you actually have with them. You're basically stopping them in the middle of the street as they're walking, you know what I mean? And you're trying to sell them something. So you really don't have much time to, to gather their information and, and their attention. Wow. Okay. That's very interesting. I didn't think of that. I'm just, I haven't think of that, you know, the, the attention spam versus the investment in the person that is trying to sell them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that comes with time as well and brand recognition. Um, do exactly. you have any favorite um, creators that you see um, short form, long form that you find very engaging? Yeah, so it, it, I'm, I, the person that I am and the things that I'm interested in right now is like other marketing firms, all right? So when I see other people selling marketing services, um, and I see what catches my attention when it comes to them, right? So I don't have any particular person that I truly follow a lot. Like I, I, I tend to pick things from very different people to see, you know, what they're doing and what's working. And what we see a lot in this industry is that trends change a lot, right? People will hop on a new trend, just like in TikTok. It's like a new trending song or it's a new trending challenge or something like that. People will hop onto that and then they'll hop onto something else. And they'll hop onto something else. I don't really look to those trends too much because those trends are changing very, very often. I like to follow things that are like timeless, right? So we were talking mm -hmm. about Disney before. And if we think about Disney as a content creator, what's something about Disney that is that is so timeless? And Disney has what's called a five minute rule, right? So you'll notice within the first five minutes of every Disney movie, you get very, very invested into a few things. You get very invested into the story. You get very invested. You get introduced first into the main character of that film and you introduce why it's important, right? So there's the problem, right? Everyone knows that every movie has problems, conflict, right? What is the conflict? But introducing mm -hmm. the conflict alone is not enough within the first five minutes. What Disney does really well is it introduces the character, it introduces the conflict, but it also introduces why this conflict is important to that character. That's mm -hmm. what's missing in a lot of people's storytelling is, yeah, sure, okay, we see who you are, you're the CEO of your business, you're talking yada, yada, yada. We see that, yes, okay, you're selling a product that's, you know, solves a, you know, a problem in the marketplace or it solves a problem or a crisis for me. Why does this matter to you, right? Because this is what people care about. People care about why it's important to you because when they see why it's important to you, they may now see why it's important to them. And this will help push them a little bit further down the, the buyer's journey or the funnel or at least brand recognition or just company recognition. So basically what you're saying is, by adding our why of why we why we are doing what we're doing why we are selling what we're selling we get that instant recognition from the buyer to identify their own whys as well and be like oh oh that's exactly what i'm feeling right now oh, hmm, okay and this person figured out a solution to do to what i'm feeling or struggling yeah. you know yeah or at least the people that i want to reach out to um or the audience that I want to reach out to, that's important to them. I know there are some people out there who are probably just more, you know, price aware, price shopping, and they're looking for the cheapest price when it comes out there, right? And those are the type of people who's uh, marketing towards, um, you know, discounts and things like that. Uh, there is a certain demographic of that market that that's very effective with. But over long term, brand recognition and things that your company and your business can do, or your personal brand can do, other than anyone else it has to come down to the why it has to come down to why is this important to you? That's what's going to outlast your competitors. Because you know, when you, you know, compete on price too much, we all know what's going to happen, right? You guys are all just going to race to the bottom, and then no one's going to make it out really, except the one with the biggest economies of scale. Um, just going back to the timeless content, you know, the whole idea of creating timeless content, what are the examples that you can give the listeners on what constitutes a timeless content? Uh, so it's interesting. I like to think about, um, you know, what brands in the past have really did a really, really good job in like le creating something that's lasting. Uh, do you guys have Subway out in Europe, like the sandwich? Of course, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I don't, I don't. Yeah. So Subway's was uh, when I think about Subway and I think about the mid '90s um, in growing up, and I think about uh, you know what they really did to create their strong foothold within mm -hmm. the fast food market because they are fast food. Uh, we think about, uh, you know, Jared, like that guy who's kind of a messed up psycho now. But at the time, they were like, okay, we're going to get someone who's going to represent like America, I guess, right? So he's this bigger gentleman. I think he was around like 400, 400 or so pounds at the time. 
and we're just going to put him on the subway diet basically right? we're just going to make him eat subway all the time every single day and we're just going to see him drop weight right so it was just americans were able to just to catch on to this everyday guy watch him eat subway every single day and eventually you know they realize now they connect now that like yeah subway helps us lose weight and subway is a healthy alternative to fast food right we're not trying to change our habit here of not eating fast food we're just trying to make better choices when it comes to fast food. And now all of a sudden, Subway is massive, right? People are going there all the time. And in their minds, it's the healthier alternative. Whether it is or not, you know, there's, that's up for debate. But it is the healthier alternative. They position themselves as the healthier alternative versus a McDonald's uh, or like a Pizza Hut or a KFC or anything like that. So I think they did really, really well at the time. And I felt like this campaign that they did back in the 90s lasts all the way until now. Right, because it, it just spawned off everything into like eating fresh, you know, eating, you know, like fresh vegetables, things are prepared fresh for you, things are clean. And they did a really, really good job positioning themselves just that with that one campaign um, at the time. So I think about them as great marketing, um, other businesses that have done a really good job. Uh, you think about Nike as well, right? Like they know their client very well. It's athletic gear, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, celebrity endorsements and, um, you know, they've been able to invest a little bit more time and money in the last couple of years into more of their social values uh, and supporting political causes and things like that. And really just, um, you know, building that uh, that deeper connection with their client, that culture uh, of, of their mm. brand with their clients. You know, I think just to kind of summarize what you were saying again, <laughs> sorry, mm -hmm. but we, basically what you're saying, the timeless content is is like weight loss is a timeless content because there will never be a time where won't be fat people wanting to lose weight, right? Or mm -hmm. a timeless content would be sports because there never will be a time when people don't want to exercise and be healthy. And, you know, so when it comes to the timelessness of the content, it's really like life and death, like birth, you know, like things that are always happening to everyone, to all the generations, right? That yeah. is what makes it timeless, essentially. And if a company can capitalize on that and use that then what they were producing back then will still be relevant in the now yeah it's a constant Except pain right yeah a constant mm -hmm. pain that they're feeling a deep pain that they're feeling like i mean my friend told me like the like in order to succeed in business you need to solve problems for people right and the bigger mm -hmm. the problem you solve the more money you're going to make from it right so if if there's a problem like weight loss that people have been struggling forever then if you're able to solve that problem, then you're going to be able to make the biggest profits when it comes down to it, right? So the bigger the problem, the bigger exactly. the payout. Exactly. But it doesn't even mean you need to solve the problem because you mm -hmm. can just say, well, you know, I have this new solution, you know, brand new that has never been done before. And then you can say that forever in a loop and call it a different solution and you would still be able to make money. So it's like you said, it's not even about reinventing the wheel. It's more about offering to different angles of same solutions or I mean innovation rarely happens nowadays even if you think yeah. about the way those things like I mean what it is like just go and eat healthy and exercise and that's kind of it but people want the magic solution the quick you know the quickest easiest you know pill or the tea or the I don't know supplements to yeah. get there so as long as you are in the market for those type of things there will always be people who want the shortcuts right <laughs> exactly exactly and, and the long-term like equity there when it comes to your content is showing the people that you actually care about their health right uh, like sure yeah. everyone wants the fast solution and stuff like that but in order to outcompete your competitors you're going to want to show them why it's important for you that the people who are consuming your product or your service are actually having a better life and you know a better outcome when it comes to using your product and your service now I have a question to you, just going back to the why, what is your why when it comes to, I, I mean, I know you have like different businesses, you're in different mm -hmm. businesses, yeah. but let's look at this one, the t-shirt that you're wearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's yeah. look at this company. What is mm -hmm. the why there? Yeah. So the why here is, uh, I mean, you know what, the thing is like, I, I noticed that I have an issue with opening too many different businesses and doing too many different things that I've really looked deeply into why that is. Um, and what I came up with, I came up with a few things and I think um, it's important to state, okay, so Nine Mile itself, right? Nine Mile, I named it after the birthplace of Bob Marley. And uh, I love Bob Marley and I love his message and I love everything that he's ever done in his life. The new life. movie is and just coming out. <laughs> I just watched it yesterday, right? So oh, yeah? uh, I thought it was how good was it? and yeah. Uh, it was, was you know what, to be honest, it was a bit flat, like how they did the storytelling, right? And uh -huh. I think that they, he, 
what they owed him a lot more for his life and his legacy but that's okay um i, I still think there was some really really great stuff that happened in that video and um there was one thing that he said in that video or in that movie that i thought was so important and i thought just it summed everything up that i was doing here at nine mile creative and even all my other businesses too and it's like the art and the message are one you cannot separate the two right so when he was like um, recording his music this is what he was saying to his bandmates right so he's like no the music's not good enough and it's, I got, we got to keep going we got to keep going we got to get the right sound and like they were frustrated because they're like oh this is taking so long it sounds good already what do you mean we gotta keep going right and he's like no this has to be like really powerful this needs to change the people this needs to move the people and the art and the message are one right you cannot separate the two so to me when it comes to nine mile creative or any other type of content anything that i say anything that i do it has to be with like all my heart all my soul, all my expression, because if it's not, then the message isn't there, right? So I, I strive right now not to just find clients for money or to do anything like that. I just want to create with creators and businesses and personal brands that care so much about their message that when they're out here, it's not just I'm here creating content. Like I'm out here fulfilling my purpose. I'm out here getting my message out to the world and um, they're just having my help to help them do that basically right so to me it's mm -hmm. just like they need to feel good about being here this this is not something that they're coming here to do out of necessity because they need to do it for their business they need to create content they need to do 30 pieces of social media per month it's really about coming here and connecting with their audience connecting with the world and what are they doing to make the world a better place yeah so basically they have a big mission that and you're just helping them I'm just to kind of the be the I'm vehicle. Just chauffeuring to... them. Yeah, exactly. I'm just helping them get there, really, right? So I'm just doing what I can to amplify their voice, basically, just like a microphone, mm -hmm. right? That's what I am. I'm there to help them amplify their voice outwards. Yeah, that's really good. I love that. I love that message. Now, um, I want to wrap up our session in just asking about your future plans, you know, and a little bit mm -hmm. about where you're going to head in five to 10 years, do you believe in this type of planning ahead or mm -hmm. how, how, do, how do you think about that? That's a great question, honestly. Like I do like planning ahead. I think there's such a, a, a strong masculine energy in, in creating plans, setting goals, achieving goals. Uh, so to a certain extent I do, right? Like when I think about other areas of my life and fitness and stuff like that, I set fitness goals for myself. Uh, when it comes to this, uh, I very much am in the moment right now. I'm very much focusing on who I am as a creator. I want to become a better filmmaker. So I'm working on short films and things that are completely creative and that may not end up taking me anywhere financially at all, but it just grows my ability to storytell. It grows my ability to, you know, just to create better films, to tell better stories, to even just capture better audio, things like that. So these are the things I'm working on now. Uh, within five to 10 years from now, you know, I just, number one, I hope I'm still here. I'm still, I'm still a good father to my son. Um, I hope that um, I'm inspiring people Right. That's the most important thing that like people are they know right away that when they're working with me that like this is you no know, purposeful content. Right. So if they want to work with someone else just to do marketing content, they know where to go. But when they want to create something that's like truly lasting uh, and impressionable with their audience, then, then they're going to seek me out. And I'm going to be the first one. Uh, I want to be working all over the world. Uh, I want to be working with clients who, you know, big companies from all over the world doing all that kind of stuff too. So just whatever it is, I'm putting it out there and um, I'm just going to take it day by day because I don't want to lose track of the now. Uh, I don't want to lose track of my enjoyment, my health right now, my friends, my family, my community. And that's really important to me. That's my priority right now. I love that. And how can people find you if they, for example, they have a, a, a mission, a message, and mm -hmm. they need the video and a visual someone who can get them there to really connect with people. Yeah, I mean, they can reach out to me. I'm happy to have a conversation with them anytime, right? On Facebook, where we connected, I'm AC Tran. So A-C-I-E space T-R-A-N. Um, um, Instagram, Ace Trizzy, A-C-E-T-R-I-Z-Z-I-E. Uh, from there, you'll be able to see all my other businesses, you know, Nine Mile Creative, Legacy Videos, um, anything else. I'm a, I'm a DJ MC as well. So like lots of stuff there. I love, love having conversations with conscious people who are into the arts, uh, who are into creating businesses and stuff like that. So I'm open for a conversation with just about anybody. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure to put all your um, socials mm -hmm. in the description of this show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I think, honestly, we hit a lot of points, a lot of information. Mm -hmm. in a, such a short amount of time, but nice and, you know, just nice and, you know, how do I say it? Compact. Not com oh, yeah. Compact. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> like just, just really, nice, really compact, sharp. Yeah. 
Sure, but I think it's important. It's really hitting the importance of everything, you know? And I think the most important really is that, you know, if you have a mission, you have your why, you should be okay, you know, and you're solving a problem that's actually relevant in business and you know how to express yourself and maybe work with AC to to elevate that for you, then you should be okay and he should be different, you know, and yeah. stand out, unique. Yeah, thanks yeah. so much for coming. Oh, no, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks so much for having me.